Hello everyone. In this video, you will see a step-by-step -step user guide for using Cloud2 SPC charts on Power BI. In this video, I assume that you are aware of what SPC charts are, when we use SPC charts, and which SPC charts we choose based on the available data. If you are not familiar with any of these, I will have links in the description with relevant resources. For this guide, I'm going to use a data set with four columns, ID, department, date, and complaints. I want to produce a control chart to monitor the number of complaints each department receives per day. I have placed here on the top a slicer for the different departments. I will set this slicer to show only a and &E data. Also, I have brought the control chart visual and adjusted it to the required dimensions as I do with any Power BI visual. As we can see here, there is one field for the date, one field for the measure, and the last field allows us to group our data in order to use hierarchical calculations. I will now bring the relevant data to the visual. So date, complaints, and department. Now my control chart is ready. I can see the center line and the mean of my measure. I also can see the upper and lower control limits that are automatically calculated. This automatic calculation is done by using all the data points as a baseline. However, I need to fix the baseline for each level of the hierarchy using the recommended amount of data points. For a C-chart, I should use 20 to 30 data points, and here I have enough to use 30 data points. I will click on the 30th data point and I can see the interactive wizard that allows me to fix the point settings. I have two options for fixing baseline. Mark baseline, which allows me to fix the baseline for the specified group, in this case, the department A and E, and mark default baseline, which fixes the baseline for all departments to be the same. Here, I want to use mark baseline, so I click this. Automatically, data points that demonstrate special cause variation are highlighted in red. Also, the whole chart is highlighted as red because the last data point demonstrates special cause variation. If I hover over any of these highlighted data points, I can see in the tooltip which special cause variation rule applies. Here I see that rule one applies, eight or more consecutive data points above or below the center line. By investigating this, I decide to mark and shift on my data and recalculate the control limits. To do this, I click on the data point that I want my recalculation to start with. Again, the interactive wizard appears. My options are start shift, which allows me to independently choose this data point as the start and later to manually set the shift end. Shift eight points. This option creates a shift by using eight consecutive data points starting with the one selected. And shift to end, where with this option, I set a recalculation from the selected data point to the latest available. I decide to use start shift, and then I will choose the shift to end on this data point, clicking and shift. My chart now does not show any special cause variation. Also, I can see the new mean and the new upper and lower limits. Through the interactive wizard of Cloud2 charts, I can also easily cost or remove data points from the analysis. I would like to remove this data point from my analysis because I know that is something wrong with it. Here, I can see that my mean is 6.3. Let's see what happens if I remove the data point. I click it 
and I choose Ghost Point. As you can see here, it became transparent and our mean has changed to 6.421. Also, by hovering over the data point, I can see the tooltip that is marked as value ghosted. Now, I want to add a comment on this data point to indicate that I started an intervention here. I click and I add my comment. I submit, and now this data point has a red exclamation mark, and now that I hover over, I can see the annotation in the tooltip. My SPC chart is ready. However, if I choose the other department, my chart is like in the beginning. There is no baseline, shifts, ghosted points, or annotations. This is done on purpose to show the use of hierarchical functionality. So now I will repeat the steps for this department. Mark a baseline, start the shift. Here I will choose shift eight points. Ghost one value that I want to ghost and annotate. You can see now that when I switch between the departments, I get different results. This functionality is very useful to have as I can see all departments in one chart. I also have an option of applying these steps to the whole set of our data. We could use mark baseline in the beginning, but here we would like to see for each department separately. I have finished now with the analytical components and I want to apply some formatting to make it look as I desire. Cloud2 SPC charts have more than 80 configurations. So in the top right corner, I can see the arrow indicator, which is pointing downwards and is red. If I want to change that, I will go under the chart settings scroll down and find the desired direction of travel. By default, this is set to up is good. Now I can see that the arrow is pointing downwards and the color is red, which is an indication that the process is not going to the right direction. However, in this example, the reduction of complaints is positive. So, down is good is the correct option. After choosing it is green, indicating that the process is going to the right direction. I also want to make the indicator a bit larger, so I will set the arrow icon scale to 0.5. Now I want to change the color of the center line. Under the chart settings, I will choose the center line color and select the color that I would like to apply. Also, I would like to increase the font size of the center line and here I will scroll down and find the center line label font size and I will choose medium. Then I would like to change the formatting of the X axis on the Axis settings, I have the option of X axis formatting. On the axis settings, I have the option of X axis format as a drop down selection. I will choose this one. And now I want to make the font a bit larger. So from X axis font size, I will go from extra small to small. Next, I would like to show you what options we have for the Y axis. We have different options for colors and sizes, and the very useful feature is Y axis formatting. In the drop down, we have the options of percentages, of thousands, or millions. Here, I will leave it as blank, but this is a useful feature. 
However, I would like to change the setting below Y axis decimal places. My data field is a whole number, so I will set this to be zero. And again, I will make the font size small. One more thing that I would like to do is to change the annotation mark. At this moment, it's not very clear. So under the chart settings, I will scroll to find the annotation marker character. I will delete the exclamation mark and then I will press Windows key and dot. As you can see here, I have a whole selection of emojis and I can choose a bubble. I will choose this one. This is now my annotation mark. Lastly, I would like also to see two sigma lines in my visual. Again, under this chart settings, I will toggle on the show to sigma option. And I will change the color of it to avoid confusion with my upper and lower control limits. So now my chart is ready. I hope you found this guide useful. If you have any other questions, please let us know by contacting us on getmore at cloud2.co.uk.